up and pray them all. Get those hands up and pray them out way. One thing I one thing I am sure I'll never ever figure out is and people have their earbuds, like these earbuds. They put them in their ears. And for some reason, I don't know what it is. Maybe they don't do this consciously, but they feel like that we observers want to hear their conversation. And no matter how crude or loud or uninteresting it is, it's done anyway. And it's, they have no idea that there's people around just going cringe. It is a cringeful, cringeful experience. Nothing like it. Um, but anyway, the reason I'm bringing that up right now is because somebody just walked past just blaring. I mean, and it was the stupidest, dumbest conversation I have ever heard. Really, it was just a diatribe, a monologue of just crudeness. But anyway, down here at my little movie place, but today, instead of movies, they're showing the first round of the U.S. Tennis Championships. <clears throat> Which, I don't know, I guess should be interesting. But it's very nice. It's outdoors. The temperature is absolutely perfect. Take a quick look around. Just today, I'm just having a cerebral hemorrhage, hemorrhage, <coughs> cerebral hemorrhage, no big deal. Um, just because there's a point <coughs> where all the information coming into your brain can just cause it to seize up, and then you need to either go into a coma, take a nap, or something. But with the passport coming in, by the way. I sent an email to Virgil this morning and gave him the address to send it to. It has to be sent via it has to be sent via FedEx. You know, there's a couple of rules involved, but I'm feeling better and better. And once I get that thing in my hands, oh Katie bar the door. I've been looking at plane tickets, rail tickets. Um, and I you know, and there's things I want to see over there, but, oh, I need to fast and pray for a solid week and go to God. But, you know, what would make, what would make things easy would be, uh, what would make things easy would be <coughs> to be able to go over there and work. Um, because look I'm ready to get out of here New York is just a money drainer although I'm not really spending any more than say 10 bucks a day at the most it's still there's no point here I mean uh, this place has been okay I guess um, it's cheapest to fly out of here you know I came here to engage as many Muslims as I could. <coughs> um, hasn't worked out to the extent that I was hoping it would. I got a little bit of experience, but here in the States, um, I don't know, maybe it'll be different over there, but just not a lot of fishing to do over here. And I'm getting cramps in my my stomach for some reason so 
I have to move around like this. So get those hands up and pray them on. Yeah, I just stretch like this because it's a little painful. But I was looking at prices to Dublin. I really want to go to Dublin because P45, Papyri 45 is there. Uh, P46 is there. I just, I would hate to, but I mean, everything is in its infant stages as far as research. And I would hate to go anywhere and run into what I've been running into here, which is you have to have an appointment and you have to go through a lot of red tape <coughs> to be able to do any type of viewing or have any type of access to the papyri here. But the big time papyri is over there, and especially in London, in the UK, where it's Codex Sinaiticus, which is Tischendorf's famous discovery in the 400s. Complete copy of the New Testament, of the Old Testament and the New Testament, minus a few leaves that fell off, but they're even finding the leaves now. It's got the Epistle of Barnabas on there, which I used to think all these uh, various epistles or Apocrypha, some of them are Apocrypha, some not, Shepherd of Hermes. I used to think that this would be a useless study or a useless read, but the more and more I'm understanding is this is a window ouch into the church fathers the first generation after the apostles and these guys had so much stuff to do as far as leadership and and uh, policy and and understanding um, some of these guys were contemporaries especially of the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos uh, or at least they were students or disciples of the um, some of them were students or disciples of the disciples of John or friends with John <coughs> so you know that, that covering that gap with the I don't know if you call them the church fathers, but say from 70 AD through the middle of the second century, that information is obviously a bridge, a very fascinating bridge between the eyewitnesses of Christ and then where we're discovering all this papyri, which validates or is a wonderful addition to our understanding of textual criticism and the authenticity of the New Testament scriptures. Um, and this is it's so fascinating because this is the way God set it up. That his word would be transmitted faithfully. It would be transmitted over a period of now 2,000 years and it's all coming together so can't tell you you know obviously I'm super excited <coughs> because New York is getting kind of you know it's getting old there's nothing here but Sin City I mean this place is Las Vegas has got nothing on this place. Nothing. I mean, if you want to waste your life, move here. It, it, make friends here. Rub shoulders here. If you want to completely throw your life away, come here. It's, it's phones. It's taking pictures of anything and everything. It's scrolling through Facebook. Instagram and it is if you read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah 
then we are topping, yeah. or they are topping that uh, with with no shame, with pride. You know, I, I hate to end with that, but hey, I think the ten minute mark. I don't want to go too too far, but very exciting uh, next few days. A lot of stuff to figure out, but get those hands up. Oh, oh, oh.